I think it went very well. I think the judges understood our arguments. And so tell us a little about those arguments for, you know, folks at home were saying, you know, kids could just sit down, they could not say the pledge, they could go ahead and, and opt out, but, but you all are going further with this. Well, that's just the point. Uh, you know, atheist humanist children are good patriotic children like everyone else, and they want to participate in a daily patriotic exercise. Right now, the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, declaring that the nation is one nation under God, basically draws a line that defines patriotism, excluding them. And but what about this, this, this argument that it is maybe unpatriotic to not say the Pledge of Allegiance as it was written? Well, I think that's kind of the point. Uh, the, the way it was written was one nation indivisible. And uh, right now it's one nation under God indivisible because that under God language was added in the 1950s during the McCarthy era. And it's that language that makes the pledge invidious towards atheists and, and humanists. It uh, really defines them as something less than true patriots, and that's not right because they are was good there a, patriots. Was there a specific uh, incident that precipitated this, or was this just something the parents felt strongly about now? More the latter. There was no one incident that precipitated it. I would point out, though, that down in Rhode Island, when a young woman named uh, Jessica Alquist brought a church state case a couple years ago, uh, there was an incident that really showed what children think about the Pledge of Allegiance in the Under God language. Uh, the other side claims in this case that the Under God language is just a reference to philosophy or history or something like that, that it's not a religious claim. But uh, Jessica Alquist, after she brought her church-state separation case against her school, uh, her entire class turned at her during the Pledge of Allegiance. They turned away from the flag and faced her and screamed under God to let her know that they felt that she was something less than a first-class citizen. So there's a concern that this would happen to these children? Well, there's concern about what the pledge is doing to instill the idea in young children that atheists and humanists aren't good citizens. That's the real concern. Every day, kids go to school for 13 years, and the pledge is an indoctrinational exercise. And it really defines patriotism in a way that portrays atheists and humanists as second-class citizens. David, two questions. First of all, can you pronounce your last name for me? It's Neosi. Thank you. And second of all, um, the judge has really kind of um, picked at you to get you to boil it down to what it is your side wants. Can you briefly tell us exactly what you're asking the court to do? Yes, first and foremost, we're looking for a declaratory judgment declaring that the current pledge practice is unconstitutional. Now, from there, there are a number of different ways that we could have a daily patriotic exercise that is inclusive and non-discriminatory, but uh, there's no one option there. There's a lot of different ways of doing it. And now, 1954 is when Under God was put in, correct? Yes, that's right. When did Massachusetts require kids to start schools to start with the pledge? Actually, even before that, I believe, yes. Uh, the original law required the recitation of the pledges, one nation indivisible, justice for all. Now you said the federal court decision was not applicable to this case. That's right, it's not. Why? Because this is a state case brought under state law, the state constitution, challenging a state law. There's no federal component to it whatsoever. Right. Thank you. What law form are you from, David? My own practice. Your own, your own practice. David, is the family here? I don't know. Can you get to the crux of the argument you're making, essentially, that this is the, the part about daily resuscitation and the, and the phrase, where the problem lies? The problem lies with the under God language that it is an indoctrinational exercise that defines patriotism to young children. So we are defining patriotism in a way to children every day that does so by portraying atheists as something that's out on the outside. If we want to be inclusive, we would just say one nation indivisible. By injecting under God into the middle of that, we are really excluding a large, important part of the demographic in this country. But it's more than just the language under God, right? It's the fact that this is said daily. Oh, certainly, and said in a school indoctrinational setting as well.